Well, welcome everyone once again on this beautiful Sunday morning to Church Online. So happy that we can connect together on this beautiful Sunday morning. Well, listen, I know frequently I say this, I talk, I talk about the three T's, time, treasure, and talent. And I just want to thank you again for your investment in this church fellowship, this church body. Thank you for your faithfulness in worshiping the Lord by giving him your time, your talent, and your treasure. We so appreciate each and every one of you and your investment in the Lord's church. Well, listen, we're going to just uh, spend a few moments in, of, of, in time of worship and praise to the Lord for his goodness to us, his, his mercy and his grace. They endure forever. Great is the faithfulness of the Lord, the scripture says. And so let's just turn our attention to the Lord. Let's open our hearts up and say, Lord, uh, I'm offering to you a sacrifice of praise with my lips, with my hands, with my voice. I'm going to praise you and worship you for your faithfulness to me and for giving to me all that you have. And so let's pause now and wherever you are, you might be in the bedroom, you might be in the kitchen, uh, you might be in the family room, living room, wherever you are though, let's pause for a moment just before we look at the scriptures as we jump into the book of Proverbs for our next several Sundays together. But let's just, uh, let's put everything aside and let's just worship the Lord and praise him because he is worthy. Amen? He is worthy. Let's worship the Lord together. <clears throat>
Thank you so much, worship team, for leading us in worship to the Lord this morning. It's always a wonderful thing when we have the opportunity to praise Him and to worship Him. Well, listen, we are going to be moving into a new series of messages over our next several Sundays. And the title of our new series is The Art of Living Well. The Art of Living Well. And if we will apply these principles that we're going to be looking at over the next several weeks in the book of Proverbs. If we will embrace them and we will live by them, we will live them out, we can expect to be living life well and enjoying the blessing of the Lord. This morning I want to, uh, as an introductory message to the rest of our messages as we jump into the book of Proverbs, and you might want to open your Bible and, uh, and, and, and mark it there. And leave it open because we'll be referring to several passages throughout our time this morning in the book of Proverbs. So we'll be uh, uh, isolating that book. We'll be looking at the, uh, the passages, the principles, the values, the standards that are shared by King Solomon in the book of the Proverbs. Now, I want to ask you a question this morning. If God were to tell you and say, listen... Uh, you can have anything that you want. Think about that for a minute. You can have anything that you want. I'll give you one wish. What do you think you'd ask for? New car, new house, new job. Somebody said a new husband. But what, think about that for a minute. Uh, what, would you, what would your response be? And there's a guy in the Bible that we're going to be looking at that had that opportunity. Solomon is the guy's name and his father was King David and Solomon was the third king in Israel over God's people and in the book of 1st Kings chapter 3 God comes to uh, Solomon and he offers him uh, he shares that request with him Solomon what would you like what would you like you name it anything you want I'm gonna provide it for you I'm gonna give it to you I'm gonna bless you with it what is it that you would like and King Solomon, he responded so differently than I think what most people, the way that most people would respond. He said, I'd like wisdom. I'd like the giftings and the talents and the abilities to be able to govern your people, God. Uh, I'd like the gift of wisdom. He could have asked for a lot of things, and so he said, I'd like wisdom. And you know what God did? God said, well, you're going to get that, but you're going to get a whole lot more on top of that. And God was, uh, was so pleased with Solomon's response. Now, Solomon said this here. He said in, in the book of Proverbs, he said, really the key to having it all is, uh, is found really in, in, in the Lord, of course. And Proverbs chapter 4, verses 7 and 8, um, Proverbs says, uh, Solomon says this here. He said, if you want it all, then here's how to get it. And he says this again in verses 7 and 8 of chapter 4 book of Proverbs. He said, getting wisdom 
is the most important thing. Getting wisdom is the most important thing that you can do. Whatever else you get, get insight, love wisdom, and she will make you great. The fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, verse number seven says. Uh, but fools, they despise wisdom and instruction. And so Solomon, right out of the gate, chapter one, and here in chapter four, these first several chapters, he says, hey, if you want success in life, if you want to walk and live the blessed life, he goes, here's how it is. It's, uh, it's get wisdom. Get wisdom, get understanding. Now, wisdom is a whole lot different than, than knowledge. It's a lot different than education. Now, now knowledge and education, those aren't bad things. Uh, they come along with wisdom many times, but that's not what wisdom is. Wisdom is not having a high IQ. I know a lot of people, and you do too, who are brilliant people. And yet, uh, they lack wisdom. You think, man, a life. Well, they're so wise, and yet they're so foolish. They're so they're so dumb. Uh, you know, you spend a little bit of time on watching a uh, a talk show on television, or you listen to talk radio, and you listen to some of these folks talk that have doctorates. They've got, you know, all these high positions, and yet you listen to them, and you think, man, a life. That that is a really dumb person. Uh, no wisdom at all. So when we look at at wisdom, uh, it's it's a whole lot different than knowledge, than your high IQ, than any of those thing, things there. I think a definition I heard, you know, many years ago uh, on what wisdom is. Well, if wisdom's not knowledge, wisdom might include knowledge. Wisdom might include a, a high IQ, but a person can have a very low IQ and yet be a person of great wisdom. So you say, well, what is wisdom then? I guess it's probably like 20, maybe 30 years ago, I heard this definition about wisdom and what wisdom is. Wisdom is simply this. It's seeing life from God's perspective. Think about that for a moment. That's what wisdom is. It's seeing life and acting in life from God's perspective. How does God see it? What does he think about it? How would he want me to respond? What would he want me to do? That's wisdom. That's wisdom. And uh, the Bible says this here in, in chapter uh, 14, the book of Proverbs. Um, he says this here. He says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end is death. Now, we hear this a lot of times. We'll hear a person say, well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go by my natural inclination. This is what I, f I feel like this is right, or I'm going to do this because I just feel it. In my, uh, in, in, I just feel it, and I want to do it this way here. And the Bible says, listen, um, you're probably going to be wrong a lot of the time if you're not depending on wisdom. You're not depending on, on the way God sees it and the decision that God would want you to make. Uh, a lot of times our natural inclinations can be way off, and that's why uh, Solomon says here in chapter 14, verse 12, he says, there's a way that seems right to a man. It makes sense. It makes they they." But the end is death. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 16 and 18 says, Wisdom is more, talking about wisdom, wisdom is more valuable than precious jewels. Nothing you could want can compare to it. Uh, wisdom offers you, listen here, what does wisdom offer? King Solomon says, Wisdom offers you long life, wealth, and honor. It can make your life pleasant and lead you to safety safely through it those who become wise oh listen to this those who become wise are happy so those who see life from god's perspective they uh they they embrace biblical principles and values and standards and they live by them uh they're happy people they're extremely happy people you see isn't, isn't it true too i mean you can go on the corner of of Osborne and Arlita Avenue today and hold a survey and say, hey, what makes you happy? What do you want for happiness? And I think you'd find over and over and over again, people would say, oh, I want long life. I want wealth. I want honor. I want pleasure. I want security. Listen, I want happiness. That's what I want. And God speaks to us through, uh, through Solomon here in this passage of Scripture. He said, if that's what you want, it's all wrapped up in this one word, wisdom, seeing things from God's 
perspective. Um, so how can God promise me longer life if I'm wise? Think about that for a moment. How can he offer me longer life if I'm, if I'm wise? Well, because if you're seeing life from God's perspective and you are living your life out according to biblical principles and values and standards, I'll tell you what it's going to do. It's going to reduce your stress in life. You're going to have healthier habits, right? You'll have happier habits, uh, uh, healthier habits, and you'll get involved probably as a result of that. You'll probably get involved in fewer accidents in your, in your life. And, uh, and, and wisdom will do that. It will help us in making right choices, right decisions in, in almost every, in every situation and circumstance in life. And by, as a result of making right choices and right decisions, you experience joy and happiness. I'll tell you what, you do it the opposite way. Do what you think is right every single time. Forget about God. Forget about biblical principles. And I want you to know you will experience regrets in life because you've made choices that were not according to God's uh, principles. So once again, what is wisdom? Wisdom is seeing things from God's perspective and then living it out. And uh, in, in living it out will just cause you to make better choices. As we mentioned before, better choices, the outcomes are much better. Isn't it any wonder that a study was done by an insurance company that they said people who are churchgoers, they live an average of 6.7 years longer than the average person. Now, I've gotten life insurance, and I'm sure many of you have as well, and you probably remember some of the questions that were asked of you, don't you? Do you smoke? Do you drink? What's your lifestyle like? And they want to know those things because they know that there's greater risk of a person making wrong choices, having regrets, and living a, more, a highly stressful life than the person who is living according to biblical principle because they're making better choices. As a result, they're going to take less risks uh, because they'll be standing on solid ground. So in this passage of scripture, he, uh, he said, you get wisdom, you get wealth, you get honor, pleasure. All these things are, are a part of wisdom. Once again, chapter 3, verses 16 and 18, the book of Proverbs says, wisdom is more valuable than precious jewels. Nothing you could want can compare with it. Wisdom offers you long life, wealth, and honor. It can make life pleasant and lead you safely through it, those who become wise are happy. Now, that's not something I said or I found in the newspaper. That's, uh, that's really right in God's word. In the, you find it all, from the beginning to the end of the scriptures. We'll talk about you live by God's uh, standard. You're going to experience tremendous happiness. So this morning, what I want to do is just cover real quickly uh, several things that will help us to become people who are wise. And then in the, uh, in the weeks ahead, we'll be looking at different subject matter that will pertain to our lifestyle from finances, choices we make, marriage, health, uh, all these kinds of things is what we'll be looking at coming right from the book of Proverbs that will, that will help us tremendously in that way. So the, uh, the one reliable source of wisdom the one reliable source of wisdom that we have. We have it right at our fingertips, and I think you probably guessed it before I even said it. It's the Bible. It's God's Word, packed with principles, packed with, uh, with direction that will help us in uh, experience the great success in life. So, uh, so the first thing, you want to be a wise person? You want wisdom? You want to see life from God's perspective. You want to operate your life, your choices, decisions based upon the principles that are in this book. Then, uh, then read God's word. That's number one. Read God's word. Memorize God's word. Uh, hear God's word. You can listen to it. Uh, there's different Christian radio stations. You can listen to God's word. Uh, you can listen to it online. You can listen to sermons, messages by some of the great teachers in our country. Um, but read God's word, listen to God's word, study God's word, memorize God's word. This is what Sol Solomon wrote these, these Proverbs. He said, Solomon wrote these Proverbs, the Bible says, to teach his people 
how to live and how to act in every circumstance. So he covers it all. He covers it all in the book of the Proverbs, how to act in every situation. He said they can teach you how to live intelligently. And I'm telling you right now, there's only one way to, uh, to, to garner wisdom and to make wisdom a part of your life. And that's to, uh, to read God's word, make God's word a part of your life. But I tell you what, that leads us into the second thing that we need to be uh, very aware of. Not only do we want to know God's word and, uh, and, and, and embrace God's word and know that it's the owner's manual for life. He's the owner. He, uh, it's the, uh, it's the, the manual for our life, for success in life. You ever run into trouble? You know, run to the owner's manual. You'll find an answer to your problem. I know that, uh, that many of us, uh, in particular those who have children, you'll remember Christmas time, you're opening up that box, and it's this bicycle that you got, and you're, if you're like me, you're dreading and thinking, oh, great, I get to put this together. And uh, so, you know, and I've done that. I've been working at it. All of a sudden, I get stuck. Well, where do I go when I get stuck? I'm not sure where the next part goes. I go to the, uh, the manufacturer's manual that tells you how to put it together, what this bike is all about, what it does, what it doesn't do, um, what part fits where. And, uh, and why do I go to the owner's, why do I go to the manufacturer's man manual? It's because they made the bike. And uh, who made you? Who made me? Well, God did. And uh, that's why we ever run into trouble. We want to know the way to, uh, to life. It's, uh, it's found in God's word, the, uh, the scriptures. But, but that takes us to set, step two, because we can know the owner's manual. We can, uh, uh, we can quote it. We've got it memorized. We uh, know where every passage is, every promise is. We can know all that there. But listen, it doesn't do you any good. It doesn't do me any good if that's all we do. Um, that takes us to step number two in wisdom. Wisdom, immediately we know it comes from God's word. But the second thing is uh, those principles and values, they don't do us any good unless, number two, you do what it says. Proverbs chapter seven, verses one and two says, never forget what I tell you to do. Do what I say and you will live. Be careful to follow it. There's another passage of scripture that we find in James chapter 1, verse 22. It says, don't merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. In other words, so fool yourself. He said, do what it says. Do what it says. So remember, the Bible says, remember uh, God's word. Memorize God's word. Never forget it. Memorize it. Never forget what I tell you to do. And then do what it says. And you will, what's the word? You'll live. You'll live. Be careful to follow it. Important. And then that takes us to number three. Um, and it's a very important for us to know God's word and then to do God's word. Live it out. I was just talking with a, uh, a couple of fellows a couple nights ago at the TGIF. And uh, we were just talking about the importance of a, of a Christian testimony. In other words, what we were talking about is, listen, we can go to church, we can know the Bible, but yet if we live anything but according to those principles and we lack wisdom, we don't have any wisdom, then listen, we're kidding ourselves. We're kidding ourselves and we're not going to make an impact on people. People, they watch followers of Jesus. And followers of Jesus, their lives are so attractive because they're living according to biblical principles that, uh, that it makes them desire to know the Savior, to know Jesus. So it's very important. So it takes us to number three, is uh, know God's word. That's the beginning of wisdom. That is the beginning of wisdom. The second thing is, you know it, then do it. Wisdom is seeing life from God's perspective, and then it's living it out. Um, and that takes us to our third thing, is wisdom... Uh, I got to know God. I got to know God. When, when Solomon starts out his, this book, he, uh, he summarizes it. And this is what he says. He says, get wisdom. And you do it by reading God's word, doing what it says, and getting to know God. Um, chapter 1, verse number 7. How does a person become wise? Well, the first step is to trust and to revere the Lord. Respect him. 
Who are you trusting this morning? Who are you trusting this morning? What are you trusting to give you daily guidance in your life for the choices, decisions that you make? Is it your own manual? Is it your own instincts? Well, I think this is right. I, um, is it uh, a horoscope? Is it the stock market? Um, you know, the Bible says that, that, that that's a dead end. Um, you know, our trust for success, for blessing in our lives, really has got to come from God's word. And it seems right sometimes in our own, our, our own way, seems right, seems good, seems just. But in the end, the scripture says it's, it's wrong. Why do, let me ask some questions here. Why do people make foolish financial decisions? Why do people walk into marriages that are doomed from day one? You've known people like that. I have too. Um, why do people start habits that they know eventually is going to nail them in a negative way? Why do people take on more in their schedule than what they can handle? Why do people buy things that they don't need with money they don't have to impress people they don't even care about? Why do they do that? Why do people have an affair and think it's not going to matter, it's not going to hurt anybody? Nobody knows about it. Why do people fail to prepare for death when they know that death is inevitable? They don't prepare for eternity. Why do people procrastinate in accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and, uh, and, and taking advantage of the tremendous benefits and blessings in knowing the Lord? Well, we're going to be digging into the book of Proverbs and looking at the answer to these questions here. But Proverbs really, it, it, it sums it all up with one answer in one phrase, and it says, the reason why they do these things and they go down that path is because of a lack of wisdom. They don't see things from God's perspective. A lack of wisdom. They might be brilliant, high IQs. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. They lack wisdom. Proverbs chapter 9, verse number 10 says, for the reverence and fear of God are basic to all wisdom. Knowing God results, knowing God results in every other kind of understanding. And if you have your Bible open, you might want to even circle that word there, fear. Are you supposed to fear God? Are you supposed to be scared of God? And, uh, and that's not what the passage is saying. The passage is saying that there is a, a, a high respect, a fear, a, a respect for God and who he is. He's the creator. He's a just God. He's a merciful God. He's a gracious God. And I think maybe the, the best way I can um, illustrate the fear of God, that respect of God is, you know, years ago, uh, we were youth pastoring in a city called Manteca, which is in the San Joaquin Valley, the uh, North San Joaquin Valley. And we had administered in a city called Turlock, which is maybe about 40 minutes, something like that, from, uh, from Antigua. So anyway, I was on Highway 99. There was an emergency from a, uh, a, a person who got in an accident, so I was heading to, to Turlock, to Emanuel Hospital. And uh, so I was leaving Manteca, and I was going through this small town of Ripon, R-I-P-O-N, Ripon. And 90, Highway 99, 55 miles an hour, and listen, I thought, I, you know, I want to get there. They're in the ER. I want to get there ASAP. And so I got in my car, and I was flying down Highway 99 and, uh, and, and looked in my rearview mirror, and what was there? You got it, CHP, California Highway Patrol, with the lights on and came to the door and uh, said, listen, I've got you at going uh, 75 miles an hour. And uh, you know, I didn't argue with him. I said, yeah. He said, uh, where you, well, where are you, where are you headed? And I had a tie on, a sports coat, and I thought, well, maybe this guy will cut me some slack. You know, I said, well, I'm, you know, I'm a pastor. I'm going to. And he said, well, well, pastor, I'm going to give you this, this ticket here. And he said, because I don't want you to end up where they are. And so, uh, so drive safely, would you? And I was thinking, like, oh, boy, here I thought he was going to cut me slack. He, uh, he reprimanded me, and rightfully so. But, uh, but every time from there on out, when I would be driving through on high, Highway 99, through Ripon, I'd look in my mirror, and if I'd see a CHP coming onto the freeway, guess what I would do? 
just knowing that that officer was there, there was a tremendous respect, and it and and he had an impact and an influence on the way that I drove. If I was going to go around a, a, a person in front, I put my blinker on. If I was uh, going, you know, 58, 63 miles an hour, I would slow it back down. Why? Because I had a respect for the officer that was on the freeway. Uh, knowing that he was there, I respected that, and I honored his position. And uh, the fear of the Lord, it's respecting God. It's honoring him for who he is. He's not my co-pilot. He's not my co, you know, uh, uh, CEO. No, no, no. He's God. He's God. Uh, and I revere him, and I worship him, and I respect him and all that he has shared for uh, to us. So, so the, the scripture, he says, listen, knowing God, knowing God, he said the reverence and the fear of God, it's basic to all wisdom. And knowing God results in every other kind of understanding. Listen, the Lord wants you to experience joy and peace in, uh, in your life. And so as we launch now into this series of messages, we'll be going through the whole book of Proverbs. And we'll be looking at things that will help us and to, uh, to become people of great wisdom, knowing the Lord. Doesn't mean you've got a high IQ. You may have an IQ, great. Doesn't mean you do. Uh, it, does, it doesn't mean that you're the smartest person in the world. Uh, but listen, above and beyond IQ and knowledge, because you, as I mentioned before, you probably know people as well as I do. High IQ, very brilliant, and yet really dumb. And, uh, and wisdom. Wisdom. It's seeing things from God's perspective and living it out. And uh, as we close this morning, Proverbs chapter 4, verses 7 and 8 says this here. Whatever else you do, get insight. Love wisdom, for she will make you great. Be determined to become wise, and you will experience the blessing of God in your life, in every area of your life. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ this morning, you can come to know him and you can come to be a person of tremendous wisdom, which will result in a blessed life, a happy life, a successful life in every area of your life. Well, how do I do that? You just receive Christ into your life. Very simple. Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me of all my sins. I place my faith in what you've done for me on the cross and on your resurrection, that you rose from the dead three days later to offer me forgiveness for my sins and the free gift of eternal life. You do that this morning, and uh, he'll come into your life. Lord, thank you again for this wonderful day that you made. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your promises. Thank you, Lord, that we can become people of wisdom. Give us hearts that follow hard after you, O oh God, and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, and amen, and amen. God bless you, and have a great rest of the day.